I'm Scott Franklin and today we'll be going through how to set up our Racewell HD handlers. So when we're starting with our um, commission, first of all we need to make sure that all of our equipment are here. So in our box we have our 240 volt power supply, we have our 12 volt power supply, our remote, our foot pedal, our instruction manual and also some diner bolts if we've got a stationary unit that we will diner bolt our handler down to the concrete. So when we're setting up our handler there's, there's three main areas that we need to concentrate on. Uh, first of all is good quality air and power. So with our air supply, our air fitting is in under here so we just hook our air hose up into there. With, with, from Tapari we supply a nitto fitting, high flow fitting, um, but that can be adjusted to suit your airlines. So the Tapari handler requires 90 psi to run and if we're weighing and drafting we're going to need that all the time. So with compressor recommendations, we'd recommend a compressor that would operate or be able to give 270 litres per minute at 100 psi. So when I'm setting my compressors up, I get my compressors to kick in at 100 and kick out at 125 psi. So I'm always guaranteed, guaranteed to have 90 psi. We also recommend having an inline water trap or filter option to ensure that we have good quality air, right? that none of the dirt and grit and moisture that will build up in our airlines if we're running them through the um, rafters, that that dirt and grit is not getting into the handler. So we recommend that. With our power supply, the Tapari is designed that we can run it off 240 volt power supply or we can run it off 12 volt. It still has the same adapter plug fitting. We can just plug that in and run it off 240 volt. Or we can plug in our alligator clips and run it off 12 volt. Depending on if we have EID built into our handler and the model of indicator that we are running, the machine will pull somewhere between six and eight amps per hour. So it's not a great deal of draw but over a day, over an eight hour day, that's 48 amps per hour. So if using a battery, we would recommend a minimum of an 80 amp hour battery um, and maybe a solar panel on the roof that would keep that charged. The second thing to consider when commissioning your handler and setting up your handler is the setting your catch wall for the class and the style of sheep and size of sheep that we are bringing in and what we are looking to do with them. We want to make sure that our catch wall isn't too wide if we're looking to, for small lambs. We don't want to be hurting those. And that it is wide enough that we are bringing in ewes or rams, that it is wide enough that we can get them. What I'll show you now is how I adjust the, the catch wall and how simple and easy it is to do which should alleviate any not being not using it. I generally will disconnect the air fittings and they are just a push-pull fitting. So if you just push the air hose into the fitting, hold the small flange in and pull out. That means I'm no longer fighting air in the ram. I also pull out, disconnect the ram, again, so I'm not fighting it. It's all designed to make it a single person operation so that you can quickly make these changes. As you can see at the front of the handler, we have five adjustments at the front, width, width adjustments, and five width adjustments at the back. To make those adjustments, if you just pull this lever out, you can then lift, 
from the back and then you can adjust in or out depending on the size of the animals that you got coming in. So what we'll do today is I'll put it on the third hole at the back. And we can set it at the third hole at the front. But one of the features of the Tapari handler is that we can also off-centre it, making it slightly narrower at the front. So if you're thinking of pregnant ewes, we can have it wide at the back, narrower at the front, so we're actually catching her on the shoulders, right, and there's no pressure on the guts. Once you've decided on the width of the catch wall, then it's just a matter of placing your ram on these four adjustables so that we get the right catch for the different width of the animal. So just a little guide that I use, that if we set it on the bottom hole, it'll open that wide but when it shuts, it's actually hitting the far wall, right? Now, if it's hitting the far wall, it may be putting too much pressure on smaller sheep, right? More pressure than we need because we want these animals to come back in a second time and a third time. With the same adjustment on the, on the bottom, if we set the ram to the top, it'll open the same width, but it'll shut here which may, might be ideal if you were looking to be backlining or getting exposure to the top of the sheep. All right, that might be a good, good width. That's the second hole from the top, and that would be ideal for catching most lambs, most ewes, without too much pressure. Then just return your pin and reconnect your air. So with the HD4 handlers, we've got these air operated anti-backing hooks to stop the sheep from, the second sheep from going backwards. Now they're operated by our magnetic eyes, our magic eyes on the opposite side of the machine. As the sheep goes past those eye sensors, that will come across. Now we can adjust this down so the hook is in this hole here, just undoing four Phillips head screws and relocating it, or we can have it down into the front and moving it up, up there. Um, also with our lead up section, and this is on all of our handlers, our lead up section is fully adjustable in width. So you can see on the bottom, we've got holes that we can adjust the width in. This is designed to ensure that we're keeping the next animal single file, one animal at a time, so they can't turn around and we're getting our good lead in and draw. So both sides are fully adjustable and very quick and easy to make those changes. With our anti-backing hook, um, and you'll see once we hook up the air, that we can adjust through our precision screw the speed in which that hook goes across, we can speed it up or we can slow it down. We ideally want that just creeping in behind the, behind the sheep. If you do have sheep that are running really well um, and this is becoming more of a hindrance than anything else, you've just got really well flowing lambs, we can just remove this pin, put it up the front into that hole there, return our pin, and that will just stop our any backing hook from coming across. Very, very simple and easy to make those changes on the fly. Going forward, we also have one on our main catch section, same thing, 
if we were crutching or anything, we need to pin that hook out. We can just remove that pin and put it up the front. So on our HD4 handler, we have all of our dash and our controls and behind our protective door here are our magic eyes and our eye sensors. So this is just designed to stop the sheep from, uh, or birds eating our leads um, when we're not using it. So we can just remove that out of the way. So turning our power on, big green light, we know we've got power. Now if we start, starting at the back of the handler, We spoke before about our magic eyes. So these are our magic eyes, which are just a, an eye sensor in a magnetic holder. And they just magnetise to our catch wall. As the sheep, as the sheep comes through the handler and covers one of those eye sensors, we can see that our anti-backing hook comes across behind the sheep. All right. And you can see that we've set that, so it's coming across nice and slow, so not too, not too fast, not likely to hit the sheep. The reason we have two, two eye sensors here is just depending on the size of the animals. Right. Um, in order for that backing hook to be in place, the sheep needs to be covering at least one of those eye sensors. So by having two sensors, we can have one high, one low, um, just to make sure that each, um, the sheep is fully covered. So back to our dash, you can see all of our buttons as our release button and our, and our catch. This is our hold pressure. Now this is equally as important as setting our width um, before on our catch wall. What we need to ensure is that our pressure is set low, right? So set it lower than you would normally think. So that when you catch your sheep, there's a minimum amount of pressure. We can, as, as the sheep comes through, if we find that they are wriggling through a little bit, we can always increase that pressure slightly, but we want to start low and then increase it slightly as opposed to having it turned up, thinking that, you know, these are our big crossies and they're coming with a bit of fight or they're straight off the boards, that we're going to need to increase that pressure. What that does, just makes that too hard, right? And we definitely don't want that because we want these sheep to come back in a second time and a third time. So I always recommend set your pressure low. So if I've set that at nine o'clock, And we catch that has minimal resistance. We can just by hitting catch on the dash just increase that pressure if that sheep is giving us a bit bit of fight. When we release and we catch our second animal, that goes back into that first initial soft setting. So little changes on the dash on the dial will make a big difference on our catch wall. All right, so just be mindful of that when setting up your handler for the first time or for different classes of sheep, to set it low and then increase it slightly to ensure that we catch each sheep adequately. Going forward on our dash, our next op um, dial is our entry gate. The entry gate has four options we can close it so entry gate shuts so now we can go and bring up sheep box them into here right we're now ready to go we can then adjust that and open it up so on auto how auto works is as an animal comes in and covers that first blue sensor our entry gate shuts and our anti-backing hook comes across 
to stop that first animal from retreating. Once the machine gets caught and you do what you need to do with the sheep, when it releases, the backing hook stays across to stop the animal from going backwards and our entry gate remains shut until that sheep has left the handler and then the entry gate will open. All right. So that gets caught. When it releases, backing hook stays across, entry gate remains shut until the sheep believes the handler. On auto fast, if we've got our sheep and they're running really well and we want our entry gate open a little bit quicker, the sheep gets caught. When it releases, our entry gate opens also. Our any backing hook still stays across to stop the animal that's in there from retreating. But this entry gate opens, encouraging that next animal to push the guy in front out. Our fourth option on our entry gate is open. So on open, when a sheep goes past, that entry gate won't shut. So we could use that if we were drenching or vaccinating and we weren't weight-based dosing and we were happy for all the animals to be single file right up behind each other, we could have that set so when the handler is caught, our entry gate remains open, allowing full flow of sheep. If we were using that feature, we could adjust this gate across to prevent our second sheep from popping out through the side of the handler. So that's just lifting and adjusting to the width of the catch wall. Another feature of the Tapari entry gate is that this section is actually removable. So if we close that, in that closed position, that second sheep can now see the animal in front to ensure that we continue to have good lead up and draw. If we were doing something to the back of this sheep, crutching or backlining, and we didn't want to be balking this animal, we can just slide that back in. Going forward to our catch, again we have two options. We have auto catch and manual catch. On auto catch, our magic eyes are working. So as the sheep is covering a blue sensor and a black sensor together, it will automatically catch. Blue sensor and a black sensor, automatically catch. So we'd use that for, if we're looking to automatically catch our sheep so we don't have to do so. Our second option is manual catch. On manual catch, our eyes don't work. Right, it doesn't come across. How can we utilize that? Um, you may have weighed all of your animals already. They're all in the right weight range, but there might be a few in there that are just dirty in the back end that you want to pull out, or you might be looking to pull out a ram or something. So what we can do from the back of the race, so we use our remote, and as the sheep comes through, all right, not getting caught, we can just use our clamp function and catch the sheep that we're looking to catch. All right, if they're a bit dirty, we could operate a draft gate, draft them off to the right, release, and then let all of our clean ones go straight through just draft off our dirty ones to the right, and then we could just bring those handful back through, switch our catch back to auto, and stand here and catch all of our sheep automatically. All right, really, really good tool is the remote control, and we'll go into that a little bit more shortly. So our next feature I'd like to talk about is our release. So on the HD4, we have three options. We have auto release, manual release and auto release on tilt return. So on auto release, 
This would work if you were using an indicator and drafting on white um, or, or auto drafting. So with electronic ear tags, you could draft on any a myriad of parameters. But on auto release, animal would get caught, weight would be recorded, draft gates would be operated and it would automatically release. So our second option is manual. On manual release, sheep will come in, automatically get caught, and that animal will stay held until you release it. So we would use this feature if we were capturing it to crutch, do feet, ear tag, drench, vaccinate. Any of our animal husbandry stuff where we need the sheep held until we've finished what we're looking to do, and then we can release. So we can release from our dash, our remote, or we can also release from our optional foot pedal, which I will show how that works shortly. Our third option on our release is on our HD4 and our HD6 models is our auto release on tilt return. So how that would work, we would use that in conjunction with tipping our sheep over for doing crutching or doing feet. So if we were to tip our um, animals over, tilt our machine across, when we return it back to that on auto release, sheep will automatically get released. So we don't need to put our handpiece down, we don't need to put our foot pairs down. The sheep is automatically released and our next sheep comes through. We can turn that feature off and just put it back to manual release. And with that feature turned off, when it releases, the sheep remains held. So now we can maybe drench it or vaccinate it and then release. So we can operate all of our draft gates from our dash. So auto is straight ahead, left, right, or on our HD4 handler, our fourth gate. Very, very simple to do, which gives you control of the sheep when you're in here. So now we're going to talk about our magic eyes. All right. On our catch section, we have four magic eyes. We have two blues and two blacks. Our blue sensors operate our entry gate and any backing hook. Our black sensors operate our catch. However, a sheep needs to be covering a blue and a black sensor at the same time in order for the catch to engage. The benefit of having two, two blues and two blacks same as at the back, is allowing us to adjust for different height sized animals, different heights, and also different, different speeds that the sheep are coming in and different classes of animals. If we've got small lambs that are coming through, we, make, we want to make sure that we only have one animal at a time. So by having a blue sensor closer to the entry gate, ensures that that'll close early and cross the nose in front of the second animal, ensuring we're only getting one animal in at a time. Then, depending on what we're looking to do with that sheep, if we're looking to crutch, we're therefore looking to catch the animal closer to the back, we would move our black sensors closer to the back, to the entry, closer to the entry. Similar to our adjusting our pressure low and then increasing, we recommend that you catch the animal earlier to start with and then adjust slightly forward if we need to catch that animal a little bit later. Because generally, as we know with sheep, if we catch it a little bit early, we can always release it, let it go a little bit further forward, and then re-catch it again, rather than having to try and push that sheep back. 
So sheep is covering a blue sensor, head is about there, catches, we've got our tail just here, ideal for crutching. If we were looking to be weighing and drafting, we could have those sensors more in the centre of the handler. And also if we were looking to drench or ear tag and catch our sheep right up the front, we could move our sensors closer to the front. The other benefit of having two blue sensors allows us, as I said, we need to be covering a blue sensor and a black sensor in order for the machine to catch. We can set our first blue sensor nice and early to ensure that we're only getting one lamb in at a time. That lamb can continue to come forward and now be covering these blue and black sensors and get caught up the front. With our weight platform, our load bars, our 2,000 kilo capacity load bars, are located here and here, but our weight platform starts back here. So if we're catching one here for crutching, and it goes all the way through to this platform here. So if we're catching them late because we are drenching or vaccinating, or ear tagging, um, or sheep's just a little bit quicker than the mob, we're still getting a good accurate weight. Adjusting your magnetic eyes are quite simple, just the magnet and again a small adjustment here will make a big difference to where we catch our sheep. Depending on the size of the sheep and what you are doing with them, um, you will need to make some small adjustments but once you've got them into a certain spot you know, take a photo, um, so when you're coming back to do similar sheep, that you've got a bit of a gauge as to where to start. And then it's just a matter of making small incremental stages, incremental movements as the sheep goes through. So if we're bringing the sheep into crutch, right, and we're looking for access to the back end, with our new swing away gate, we can now catch our sheep if we're looking for a little bit more access to the back end, we can just push down our spring-loaded gate and swing it around there and that is secure, giving us a lot more access in the back end for doing a sail bung or for a, for a um, sail crutch. If we are looking to tip that sheep over for a bit more access in the back end, we can again swing that gate across and lock that in and that is our rump support. To tilt our machine, we can use the hand remote just by hitting the up button. With the Tapari machine, our Tapari handlers, in our side tilt, a lot of the other handlers on the market, when they tilt, they are either upright or at 90 degrees. With the Tapari handler, we have the capacity and the ability to stop that on any, anywhere along that plane. You know, so if that's a nice good spot, just got the sheep off its feet to get a good sail crutch, Right, we can stop that there. Or we continue to bring it across to 90 degrees. We then have our tail flap option, which is just operated by the button. Opening up our tail flap, giving us a lot more access for a full crutch, access to feet, udders, right, or anything else that we may need to be doing to the rear, rear of our sheep. To return our side tilt, we can, again, just using the remote, we can hit the down button. Our tail flap automatically retracts first and then closes. If we were looking to get access to the back end, we can remove, as I mentioned earlier, we can remove that backing hook from coming across just by pinning it out of the back. Our 
Our second option for operating our side tilt is from our foot pedal. All right, so if we were spending all day down the back just doing sail bungs or crutches, we can use our foot pedal to tilt the machine. Same as the remote. As soon as we take our foot off the remote, off the pedal, it will stop. So we can get that deep at any, any point along that plane. Again, operate our tail flap. And then when returning, it's as simple as just using our foot pedal. As I mentioned before with the auto release on tilt return function, if we flick that to there to save us from putting down our handpiece, we can tilt our machine over, operate our tail flap, finish, return, and the handler automatically releases. That sheep goes out, next sheep comes in, automatically gets caught, and we can side tilt. So if we now plug our foot pedal into our catch and release, we can now use our foot pedal for such functions as drenching, vaccinating, ear tagging. So all of those features where setting our machine on auto catch, as the sheep comes in, gets caught, we can ear tag it, drench, all those sheep are held here without any fight and automatically release. Next sheep comes in, automatically gets caught. Again, there's no fight in there. We can increase that pressure if we do have a sheep. So we've got a catch, which will just tighten that up. We can drench, we can vaccinate, we can ear tag, and then release. So we're not putting down our hand pieces, our, our, sorry, we're not putting down our drench guns. We're not moving. We're just getting good flow of sheep through to be able to drench, vaccinate, ear tag by catching and release. So this is our any jumper designed to stop our lambs and sheep from jumping out, just designed to keep their head down. It also acts as a hungry board. So if we do get larger ewes or rams in here, and we are side tilting them, it's actually holding them in there. So it actually has a dual purpose, just keeps those ewes and rams contained um, for their safety and for ours. So if you are using the machine for backlining or something like that, you can just undo your bolts, take it off, giving you full access to the top, and then it's just a matter of bolting them back on again. With our load bars, You can just plug those into your T30 tablet or your Gallagher or True Test indicator of choice. Um, standard low bar plugs, they'll just plug straight into your indicator. And your serial comms cable, which will just plug into the bottom of your indicator, um, which will communicate from your handler to your indicator to allow auto drafting. One thing that we do um, recommend is that you don't utilise or don't use um, stock prodders um, in, in the yards or near the handler. Um, the reason for that, just with all the galvanising, um, we can actually send shocks up into the electronics or into the load cells um, and it just creates, uh, creates issues with that, those surging and things like that. So we recommend that you don't use stock prodders around the handlers or drafters. One thing to be mindful of is who has access to the remote. Um, all of the functions on the dash are replicated on the remote. So we can catch, release, operate all of our drink draft gates. All right. But we also can operate the tilt and the tilt return. All right. So we just want to make sure that someone at the back of the race isn't tilting or releasing a sheep whilst you are trying to do something with it. 
Rightio, so that wraps up our basic instructions on commissioning a HD4 handler. Um, there's a lot more videos, instructional videos on our website. Uh, feel free to jump on there or contact your local rep. Thank you.